Welcome to a brand new episode of This Week in Apps. I'm Ariel from App Figures, and here's your weekly roundup of the most interesting updates from the world of mobile apps and games. And I'm trying a new microphone today. Can you hear the difference? Let me know in the comments. Coinbase enjoyed an amazing couple of years. Uncertainty during lockdowns drove more regular folks towards crypto, and Coinbase was the app of choice to buy and sell. Back in January, it looked like Coinbase was going to become one of the dominant apps across the App Store and Google Play, and I even suggested they'll happen in 2022, but I was wrong. Huh? Crypto has been in the news a bunch over the last few weeks after one currency totally collapsed. Bitcoin's value shrinking drastically since February didn't help either. And the same platform that brought common folks into crypto is now facing silence. Downloads of Coinbase dropped to less than half so far in 2022, and I'm not even comparing it to the highs of 2021. I will in a little bit. In January, Coinbase welcomed a little over 2 million new downloads, according to estimates, and that's been dropping consistently since. In April, downloads didn't even get to 900,000, a decrease of more than 57%. Downloads rebounded a tiny bit in May at a touch more than 900,000, but aren't looking anything like January and are far from the 3.9 million downloads Coinbase saw in May of 2021. Is this the end of crypto? Unlikely. I think many companies enjoy the naivety of the millions who were lured into investing without understanding why and how it really works. And thanks to apps like Coinbase, they were able to set their money on fire pretty easily. That trend is now on ice, and that's a good thing if you ask me. Regulations, platform changes, and a purge of bad actors will allow crypto to come back into the mainstream. So it's not a question of if, but rather when. On to games. A new old game crossed the platform line from console to mobile a few weeks ago and immediately took command of the App Store and Google Play. If you haven't looked at the top charts in the last couple of weeks, that game is Apex Legends Mobile, a battle royale game that launched on consoles in 2019. Not that old. In its first two weeks on the App Store and Google Play, we estimate that the game added nearly 16 million new downloads. A little more than 60% of those came from Google Play and the rest came from the App Store. Revenue was the exact opposite. Of the nearly $5 million of net revenue the game has earned so far, 73% came from the App Store and the rest from Google Play, and this is pretty normal for a game these days. I talked about the difference between revenue on the App Store and revenue in Google Play a whole bunch of times in previous episodes. I'll link to a few below, but that's just the reality. There's more money on the App Store. Incredible. The top countries included US, India, and Brazil, and together the trio was responsible for about 40% of all downloads for the game. But let's go a step further and estimate revenue per download, which we can get by dividing revenue by downloads. Since we have data from day one, this simple metric will give us insight into how good the game is at turning downloads into money, which is what's important. Two weeks in, we estimate the game's net revenue per download is which isn't very high. For comparison, Call of Duty Mobile's all-time net revenue per download is $3.22 according to our estimates. PUBG is a little bit lower at $1.85 but still more than double. Now, I'm not saying Apex Legends can't get there, but I'm saying there's a lot of room for growth. Speaking of growth, I'm trying to grow this channel and could really use a like. So please take a second to do that below. And while you're there, maybe you want to subscribe for more content like this. Next, Twitter has been through a lot in May. I'm not gonna talk about any of that. Instead, I'm going to check in on Twitter's monthly revenue, something I've been doing since Twitter started monetizing in-app last year. Did Twitter's in-app revenue grow in May? Did Elon's hostile takeover help? Is Twitter's revenue still unreasonably small? Well, numbers first. According to our estimates, Twitter earned $434,000 of net revenue via its mobile apps in May. And that's net, meaning after store fees. As you'd probably expect, the majority of this revenue, roughly 90%, came from the App Store. That's an increase of 18% compared to the previous month, which happens to be the same growth rate Twitter experienced in April. I think it's safe to say that Elon shenanigans didn't do much for or against revenue in May, but the real question remains, why is Twitter's revenue so tiny and growing so slowly? If you ask me, it's because Twitter isn't really doing much to grow it. Twitter Blue is still pretty boring and unappealing. Super follows are still too exclusive. And worst of all, most of the platform's users don't even know about these features. I imagine Twitter has a plan, but with most things frozen while its ownership is determined, I don't expect it to change anytime soon, which is a possible win for the competition. While I'm talking about revenue, Peloton, the high-end exercise bike company that took off during the pandemic and crashed right after, has hit a new milestone with its app, the highest month of revenue. Why is that interesting? Because if you recall, Peloton pivoted a bit last year to focus more on its content, and that's where app revenue is coming from. 
Peloton ended May with the most revenue in a single month the app has ever seen. Our estimates show net revenue hitting $6 million in May. The majority, roughly 92%, came from the App Store while the rest came from Google Play. Very similar to what we see with Twitter and not by accident. Now that's net revenue and not gross revenue, which means this is what Peloton gets to keep after giving Apple and Google its fees. The increase in revenue isn't only a great milestone for the app that wrote its content, pun intended, <laughs> to success even before it went in app, but also a great show of strength on mobile. So far, revenue has grown 42% when compared to January, which was already higher than average. App revenue is a small part of Peloton's total revenue right now, but given this growth so far in 2022, I don't see any reason for it to remain that way, and I don't see inflation getting in the way either. And last one for this week. Last weekend, Paramount Plus had the most download it's ever had in a single day. In the past, new movies or TV shows led to short-term bumps, but not this time. We estimate that on Saturday, downloads hit 169,000, the highest they've ever gone since the app relaunched in March of 2021. Paramount has seen quite a few spikes, but the closest one to last Saturday's was less than half. So what's the reason for the spike? Paramount Plus was streaming the Champions League final between Liverpool and Real Madrid, European soccer ultimate game. Also, Paramount Plus offers a free trial, and that's an important component here. Also, also, the downloads did not come from Europe. An incorrect but understandable guess. Why? Because Paramount Plus isn't available in Europe yet. It's expanding to the UK and other countries later this month, so all of those downloads came from the US, a country not really known for soccer. One thing I'm planning to watch is whether those downloads turn into revenue. Big events are a great way to capture downloads, but as HBO Max learned over the last few years, offering a free trial on top of big content is not a good way to make money, which is why they took away the free trial. It's too early for Paramount Plus to strictly optimize for revenue, but if it continues to find the right content to stream, it just might. And overall, that's what I expect to see from all the streamers this year as the industry normalizes, a move I've been talking about for most of last year and a little bit the year before. And that's all I have for you this week. If you have any questions or feedback, drop a comment below. Check out last week's episode to see a clever campaign that's allowed one app to dominate the App Store, and that's still going. And if you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next week.